A couple activities ago, we showed you an example of how for loops are used in um, high performance computing. We talked about how supercomputers can uh, predict the weather. Well, supercomputers and for loops are used for lots of other complex applications as well. Um, these, these simulations are done for a variety of reasons. Often the thing they're trying to simulate are too small, like in a chemistry simulation, or they're too big, like in an astronomy uh, simulation, or uh, too dangerous, as in some kind of severe weather or earthquake uh, simulations. So I'm going to show you here a quick video of some of these things, some of these simulations that are done at a supercomputer center here um, uh, near the University of Illinois. Uh, this is from the Advanced Visualization Lab at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. So this will give you a good flavor of what these, uh, what types of simulations they do there. Okay, here's a video of the formation of our Milky Way galaxy what's going on as the Milky Way orbits. And here's the collision of two different galaxies. That might be how our galaxy uh, dies someday. Uh, here we're looking at the uh, very microscopic level surface of, of an atom and some uh, how a tornado forms, a simulation of how a tornado forms. This would otherwise be way too dangerous. Uh, here's a simulation of what's going on in the eye wall of a large hurricane. Uh, what happens when a star like our sun explodes and then collapses back on itself? And what's going on at the surface of our sun? All the gases and underneath the surface and when the sun emits dangerous radiation, how the earth protects it with its magnetic field. What's going on with traffic simulation in Chicago and deep down into the cellular level uh, where we're looking at the very uh, chemistry of our life in our DNA and how about um, you know a large cluster of uh, you know many thousands of galaxies so all this stuff uh, done by supercomputers and again wouldn't be possible without um, for loops executing uh, fairly simple procedures over and over and over again Okay, so let's get on with the activity now. Um, just a reminder, we are in the fourth activity called Loop Jumper in the For Loops uh, chapter of Learn to Code. So this says here, as is similar to our last activity, where we need to identify a repeating pattern for jumping through the portals and collecting all the gems. If we look in the upper left-hand corner, there are five gems we need to collect. Uh, we haven't collected any yet. Now, uh, let's go ahead and uh, the real trick to this is just sort of trusting uh, ourselves and finding a way to get to at least one of the gems and then from that point we'll uh, move on to the next gem and so on. So we're going to approach this problem like we have others by uh, breaking it up into sub-problems. So the first sub-problem I see is let's go get this gem that's closest to us right now uh, this one right here and to do that we're going to need to move forward then turn left and then two more two more move forwards and then we'll collect that gem so okay let's try this move forward turn left and then two more move forwards and then we should be under the gem and let's go ahead and collect it okay so if I run this code here, uh, I see I move forward, I turn left, I move forward twice, and I collect this gem. Okay, all right, good. Now, at this point, uh, we should see uh, what else we can do here. Well, um, it looks like I'm fairly close to one of these other gems here. I can either grab this one or this one. The thing that intrigues me about uh, both of these is that I can, um, if I go get them, I can use the same sequence of commands I just used to get to this one or to this one. That means I can, you know, make this L shape where I 
move forward one, turn to the left, and then move forward two. Uh, even behind me, I can uh, move forward one, turn to the left, and collect that gem as well. So uh, I think I'm going to go... Hmm. I'm going to try this one. I'm going to try this one right here. Uh, but in order to do that, execute the same, the same uh, sequence of patterns, move forward, turn left, move forward, move forward, collect gem, I need to turn myself to the right one. Okay. So if I do that again, I can say uh, turn to the right, and then I'm going to try these things again here. Move forward, move forward. Sorry, move forward, turn left, move forward, move forward, collect gem, and turn to the right. Okay, I'll leave a little space. Let's try this and see what happens. Move forward, turn to the left, move forward, move forward, collect gem. Now turn to the right and do it again. Move forward, turn to the left, move forward, move forward, collect gem. Okay, now what would be what would happen here if we were to do the same thing if we were to turn to the right then move forward turn left move forward move forward and collect gem can you see what would happen mentally go through that activity okay turn to the right move forward would have us take the green portal over to here and then there's a turn left and if we move forward move forward we'd be under another gem here this one up here. And then and we can collect that gem, again turn to the right and follow the same sequence of commands and we'll go get this gem here. Okay? So I'm seeing a pattern here whereas if we just execute this com sequence of commands move forward, turn left, move forward, move forward, collect gem, turn right, we will collect at least three or four of these gems. Okay? So let's put this in a loop and watch what happens here. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one because we know we're going to put this in a loop now. All right, remember the syntax for a loop is for i in 1 up to maybe, uh, let's try 4. Okay, and now I can grab this uh, curly brace here bring it down all the way to the end. Okay, good. Let's try this uh, sequence of commands four times. If we embed the sequence of commands in a for loop that goes from one, uh, the sequence one comma two comma three comma four, this set of commands will execute four times. So here we go. Let's see if we can collect four gems. Here's the first iteration. Collect gem. Second, turn to the right, move forward, turn left, move forward, move forward, collect gem, turn to the right. One more, move forward, turn left, move forward, move forward, collect gem, turn to the right. And one more, move forward, turn left, move forward, move forward, collect gem, turn to the right. Okay, we still have one more gem to go here. Can we um, do this one more time? Well, uh, let's check. If we move forward, turn left, move forward will take us to the purple portal. And if we move forward two more times, move forward, move forward, we'll be under the last gem. And we can collect it and turn to the right. So uh, all we have to do is make this for loop instead of going from one to four. Let's make it go from one to five and it'll pick up all the gems. All right. I'm going to run this stepping through the code so we can watch the for loop, uh, the sequence of commands happen over and over and follow along with the dots on the left hand side of the code here. Collect gem, turn to the right, move forward, iteration number two, move forward, turn left, move forward, move forward, collect gem, turn to the right. Iteration number three, move forward, turn to the left, move forward, move forward, Collect gem, turn to the right, now up to iteration four. Move forward, turn left, move forward, move forward, collect gem, turn to the right, and iteration number five, move forward, turn to the left, move forward, 
move forward, collect gem, turn to the right, and we did it. Okay, very good everybody. So you're really seeing how powerful these for loops are here. Uh, once we find a simple sequence of commands that's effective in uh, getting the job done, we can execute it any number of times we want just by embedding it in a for loop here. All right. Okay, good job, and we'll see you next time.